I'm interested in careers in product management, UI, UX design, and also machine learning applications. And for me, I joined CSK because I'm originally from Maryland, which is out of state, like across the East Coast. And I didn't know anyone before coming to Berkeley. So for me, I just wanted to meet people and also have a support network of girls coming into college. And I also wanted to learn about all the resources for computer science before going onto campus and all the ways that I can take an opportunity of these just so I can declare. And I think it really helped me meet empowered girls, especially in classes, because CS is such a male dominated field. It can be hard to find friends and other girls in your classes, but CSK made my experience so much better. And on campus, I'm also involved in clubs like M Mobile Developers at Berkeley. Um, I'm also involved in Blueprint, and I also do research for Haas, which is the business school. And then non-CS related stuff, I do PR and web design for the Bear magazine, which is a fashion magazine, and also for my sorority, which is Sigma Psi Zeta. Um, and I also recently just declared both of my majors this year. So if you guys have any questions about declaring or getting involved in clubs on campus, yeah, feel free to reach out to me. All right, so hi, I'm Lizzie. Uh, I'm a freshman and uh, my majors are CS and IEOR. Uh, uh, which is industrial engineering and operations research. If that spikes your interest, you can definitely come talk to me when we do breakout rooms later. Um, but basically I'm interested in uh, CS. I think data is really, really hot and there's too much data in the world to go around. So we need to find good ways to harvest it. I'm also interested in data science. Um, I uh, dabble a little bit in UI UX design in the form of graphic design as well. Um, so if you're interested in how to apply that to software engineering, you can also come talk to me about that. Um, and I'm also very specifically interested in machine learning, uh, which is a subset of CS, uh, which is a lot of math and a lot of uh, predictions. And I think it's a really innovative and beautiful uh, application of CS that everybody should at least try to dabble in a little bit. Um, so on campus, I am involved in an organization called uh, CS Kickstart, obviously, uh, and also an organization called Machine Learning at Berkeley. Um, that's probably my main uh, club devotion uh, at Berkeley. Um, and then I'm also uh, like a UI UX designer for like a startup in the area. Um, and yeah, I'm interested uh, long term in uh, PM and general software engineering and uh, probably machine learning engineering uh, long term and like data science analytics and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Hey everyone, I'm Sabrina. I'm a uh, first year also studying CS and I'm studying or like intended CS and I'm studying business through the global management program. Um, so Kickstart was my very first introduction to CS. That was when I actually, that was like, yeah, that was my first introduction. So um, if you guys are interested in like talking about entering these really like these difficult CS classes with no background experience, with nothing, um, feel free to talk to me or honestly any one of us um, off campus or I guess through like campus organizations, right? Um, I am in some business organizations. Um, I'm in one organization that focuses on financial literacy, which I think is a really amazing topic, um, but also like a really big, socioeconomic issue at the same time. Um, another club I would say um, that I devote a lot of my time to is CalHacks, which hosts, uh, which some of you guys may have even went to before. Um, we host annual hackathons um, and like not to toot CalHacks horn or anything, but um, I believe we host some of the biggest if not the largest colleg collegiate hackathons in the nation. Um, so, you know, if you're interested in call hacks or if you're interested in business clubs or economic clubs, feel free to also drop by my breakout room later. Um, and I'm from Fremont, California. Sweet. All right, awesome. So you might be sitting here wondering, okay, like, what will I even learn throughout this entire like webinar panel Zoom thing? Um, 
and I'll tell you what you'll what we'll cover today. So basically, the first thing um, is we'll go over the different types of double majors. There are more than one type of double major, which is interesting. Um, we'll also go over the advantages. We'll go over the pros and cons of double majoring. Um, and something we hope you guys will realize is that this is a pretty big decision. Um, you're essentially choosing to devote almost half of your time at Berkeley to studying another major um, or minor. So it's a pretty big decision, which we'll also cover. Um, the third, we'll try to give you guys some tips or some ideas on how you can get started with writing your schedule or uh, figuring out your roadmap for the next two or four years. And then we'll cover the common obstacles that you may encounter when you are trying to double major or do some type of double major or minoring. Um, and then Lizzie will go over the key takeaways, uh, basically what we hope you guys will learn or what we hope you guys will absorb by the end of this. And then at the very end, we'll have time for Q&A and also breakout rooms. So if you guys have any questions that, you know, it may be more personalized, um, feel free to just ask them in the breakout rooms. Okay, so there are different types of double major uh, programs or double major flavors, if you will. Um, so the first being a joint major, and this is actually kind of tricky. And personally, I'm not doing a joint major, but um, for those of you who are interested in uh, undertaking study in two major areas of engineering, um, this could be for you. So I'll actually, uh, okay, I'm on two different laptops, but I'll just give you like a brief list of joint major programs currently offered. So if you're interested in bioengineering and material sciences, EECS and material sciences, EECS and nuclear engineering, material sciences and mechanical engineering, material sciences, and nuclear engineering and mechanical engineering and nuclear engineering. All of those are joint major programs. And basically, um, they're very similar to double major, but they are offered through the College of Engineering. Um, College of Chemistry also has their own joint major programs, but we assume that if you are here, you're more interested in engineering and CS stuff. Um, okay, I'm gonna see if I can drop the website link or if Eileen can do it, but I'm on two different laptops, so maybe kind of hard. But okay, if any of you want to know what the link is, um, we can share it later in the chat. But for now, just know that a joint major is within the college itself. So all of the ones I listed are within the College of Engineering. The College of Chemistry also has their own joint majors. And other than that, I am not too sure if any other colleges offer joint majors so far. Now, the double major is what all of us are doing. It's the pursuit of two distinct majors within the same college. So for example, if you're studying CS and uh, cognitive science, like what Eileen is doing, that's a double major because it's all through the College of Letters and Sciences. Um, if you're studying, okay, that's a, what a double major is, CS and stats, CS and English, English and, statistics, those are double majors. They're all within one college. What Lizzie and I are doing are simultaneous degrees, meaning that you're pursuing two different majors in different colleges. So Lizzie is going through the College of Engineering as well as the College of Letters and Sciences, right? IEOR and CS. And I'm going through the College of Business as well as the College of Letters and Sciences. So those are pretty much the fundamental differences um, if you have any more questions, feel free to drop them in the chat below. But for now, just know that there are different types of double majors that you can pursue. Okay. Great, great. Okay, so um, I think looking at statistics on like major analysis is always really, really, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a way to gain different insights, right? About uh, Berkeley's sort of major landscape, right? So, um, the picture on the right basically tells you what are the most popular majors at Berkeley, right? Comp is pretty up there. Eeks is pretty up there, obviously. Um, so this might give you a better idea of like the undergraduate demographic of um, what types of majors people are doing at Berkeley. 
um, there's also a lot of really, really good websites where you can find a lot of data because all the data, data that Berkeley harvests about its undergraduates is online. I really, really recommend that you guys go searching for your own data when you're considering uh, double majors and like what percentage of people are actually doing double majors. Um, so a really, really interesting finding is uh, in spring 2020, LNS computer science was the most frequent co-occurring major, right? This is really interesting because you're you guys are in a great spot, right? If you're interested in studying CS, there's um, there's a really big trend with people seeing the applicability of CS to other majors, right? Like math and econ and and um, and data science and business, right? It's such a beautiful combination and it's like bread and butter to a lot of different fields. So um, it makes sense that uh, 2020 CS is the most frequent co-occurring major. Um, yeah. So um, let me take you a little bit on a journey through different stats as well. So um, if you look at this website, I think Eileen is gonna drop the link in the chat for you guys. This website is one of the websites that I found online. It's basically a very in-depth analysis about not necessarily only double majors stats at Berkeley, but a general like overview of all the stats uh, in Berkeley, right? So it takes into account like student expenses, and um, financial aid and admissions acceptance rate um, and enrollment and full-time and part-time enrollment, right? Uh, and it just does a very, like if it does a very extensive, extensive study about like uh, just a general overall demographics at Berkeley, right? Um, this is another link that I found online. This is like the juicy stuff. This is some really, really good stats, right? This basically maps out um, what majors uh, in line with other majors are uh, most popular or have been taken the most by students at Berkeley. So um, if you look at uh, LNS computer science, you can see that it's super popular with like applied mathematics. A lot of people uh, are interested in, in that segment of those two like pairings, right? Um, and then a lot of people are also interested in say like um, LNS data science and computer science as a double major, right? Um, this is a really useful website if you just want to see like what are the hot combos uh, for like, the up to date um, the up to date majors. And just because there's no circle doesn't mean like there's no people double majoring it. It's totally fine if you're interested in like say like political science and CS like that's a cool combo. Um, it could, you could really do something out of that. So don't be discouraged if like you don't see a bubble on here. <laughs> like there are also there are always ways that you can combine your interests and be happy with a double major. So just keep keep uh, keep research in mind, like research oriented stats in mind when you're searching for like what double majors that you're interested in and uh, which ones you want to go shopping for. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we'll go over a sample program plan as well as um, some of the steps that you may need to take to declare a double major or a simultaneous major. So this is a very um, this is a draft of a program plan that uh, Keyboard Jones has, okay? An incoming freshman, right? And she wants to study statistics and CS. So that would be a double major because both are through letters, College of Letters and Sciences. Um, so one part of figuring out your four-year plan or figuring out how you can declare is you need to download a major petition or you need to download the simultaneous degree major petition or the double major petition. Um, basically a petition is kind of like an application um, which you turn in so that you can get approved to actually take the classes or to declare. Um, and another step would be making a meeting with an undergraduate advisor in each of the departments. For example, for her, she would have to meet with someone from statistics department and someone from the CS department um, so that they can help formulate the plan and make sure that you're not overworking yourself or that you can declare before you meet any unit or semester deadlines. Um, as for where you can find these petitions, um, you would go to the LS advising page or basically I guess whichever college you are in and you want to declare a double major, you would go through the advising page of that college. And when should someone submit a petition? 
there are deadlines to submitting a petition. Um, for double majors, you must submit the petition by the first day of the classes in the term in which you intend to graduate. For most people, that would mean before your eighth semester, because that's when you normally graduate. Simultaneous degree has to be submitted at least two terms prior in order to meet requirements. For example, if I'm taking eight semesters of classes here, I would need to submit it before my fourth year, before my seventh semester. Um, Okay, so those are the questions answered in the chat. Um, okay, we can answer more questions later in the Q&A, but for now I'll finish talking about the four year or like your roadmap. Um, and then you submit the completed petition. Uh, you, if it's a simultaneous degree, you wanna submit it to both colleges. If it's a double major, I believe you only submit it to that one college and then they'll figure out if like you meet all requirements or prereqs. Um, and then note that this process varies for the simultaneous degree petition, but only slightly. Um, for everything you do for one college, just multiply by two. So you're doing it for the other college as well. Um, if you have any questions about specific classes to take or anything like that, please save them for later because um, we're just gonna try to finish going through our presentation uh, as quick as possible. Good questions, though. We're, we definitely have a Q&A section. I love how you guys are excited and, and want to ask your questions here. Okay, so when I was deciding to double major, I actually came into Berkeley just wanting to do CS, but um, I came across computer um, cognitive science and I wanted to add it as a major and I had to think of the pros and cons of adding this major. So when I was considering this, um, one of the pros was that it was multidisciplinary and that it had more breadth. Um, it opens you to more classes that you'll be interested in taking and lets you explore different fields that you would be interested in as well. Um, and then it also opens you up to more job prospects and opportunities because double majoring lets you be more well-rounded and also more valuable in the workplace. Um, in addition to this, you'll meet people who you wouldn't have met when you, in your regular classes. Um, you'll meet people with different perspectives and different backgrounds and also you get to network with different professors as well. Um, the cons are that it requires a lot of planning and that you have to do a lot of planning like during your first and second years. Um, and you may have to prolong your graduation time because you have to take more classes. And although you can overlap um, and your major may have requirements that overlap, you can only choose two classes to overlap. So even if you have multiple classes like four or five, you can only choose two that overlap and you have to fill, fill you still have to fulfill the other two requirements in other ways. Um, another con is that because you have to do almost twice as many classes, uh, you have to take, I have to take a minimum of 16 to 18 units per semester. So it's a lot higher workload because of that. And because you have to distribute your workload across two majors, you would have to study them in less depth though. So that is another con that you have to consider. So if any of these cons are deal breakers to you, just know that there are alternatives. Um, minors are a less in-depth way to explore different majors. Um, so you would have to take less classes instead of 12 or more classes. Um, also, if you're in LNS, you have a lot of extra space for extra classes and clusters of classes you wanna take, like math or stats. And you can also take these classes um, out of your own interest and for your own knowledge so that you can apply them later on in the workplace. Um, we also have decals, which are one to two unit classes um, that are really light and also let you learn skills that you wouldn't have before. And they're like very low commitment. Um, another thing that you can do is do a domain emphasis. So I know this is for the data science major, um, for data science, you can major in data science, but you can choose to specialize in different fields like economics or psychology without having to major in them. Another way you can learn about different fields is through clubs, research, internships, and also study abroad programs, because believe it or not, you actually don't need to major in computer science to get a computer science job. And you don't have to be in that major to get that job or to be in a club 
related to that field. So you can always pick up different clubs, research, and jobs that aren't related to your major, even if you wanted to. And this is also a good idea if you're not sure about double majoring and you want to explore a different field before you decide to commit to double majoring. Um, and another way is to graduate early instead of double majoring. And this is a good option if you're looking to save money because the CS major is actually designed to be finished in three years because there's a lot of extra space for breadth classes and also classes that you're interested in. Okay, so now uh, I'll go over some of the obstacles that you may face when you are trying to double major or achieve a simultaneous degree. So the first one is kind of obvious. Um, one big thing that I think stops a lot of people from being able to declare is lack of planning. So for example, okay, what I always think when I think about double majors or even a minor is that you are taking on a commitment to take 10 to 15 more classes. And if you think about it, that is a lot of classes that you're adding to your already possibly busy schedule. So you have to plan really well. You don't wanna take a bunch of hard classes later on because you didn't plan early enough, or you don't, you don't wanna take like 20 plus units later on because you spent too much time thinking or not enough time actually like taking some prereqs, if that makes sense. So you really, really, really do want to plan. And I cannot stress that enough. Um, but at the same time, don't think that just because you don't start something freshman year that you can't declare. I know people who thought about CS like sophomore year and then they declared sometime junior year or something like that. Um, Okay, so the first is lack of planning. The next one is balancing your lower division prerequisites. So this is going to be tough because um, some of you guys may know about the infamous, you know, GPA cutoff for CS at Berkeley, um, a 3.3 cutoff. And you want to make sure the classes you're taking, the prerequisites, um, you're planning them well enough so that you're not overworked, right? So for example, me personally, uh, CS prerequisites are like 61A, 61B, and CS70, the three classes. Uh, Haas prerequisites are like UGBA 10, Econ 1, and some math classes. So what I had to do, and what I'm sure like Eileen and Lizzie had to do as well, was figure out what classes to take and when. So maybe during the summer, if you are interested in double majoring or a joint major or a simultaneous degree, spend some time thinking about your schedule. Read, go onto Reddit or something and read about like classes and professors and figure out which ones are maybe easier, which ones are good to take with other classes, if that makes sense. The third one is procrastination. This goes hand in hand with lack of planning. Um, if you procrastinate too much on your prerequisites, you're gonna have to take all of them in one semester um, because there is kind of a deadline to to submit your petition, right? You don't wanna take them all in one semester all at once because that could get really, really hard. Um, the last one is a unit and semester limit. Um, unit wise, for a double major or a simultaneous degree, you have to, what, how do you say it? Um, I believe you have to graduate in the semester that you've exceeded 136 units. Um, Normally, a single major is 120 units, but a double major is, I believe, 136 units. Um, okay, these numbers, they should be right, but if I'm wrong, then sorry about that. But it is definitely 136 majors. Um, sorry, 136 units. That's when you have to graduate. That's like your last semester you can be there. Semester-wise, you can take up to nine semesters. Um, they give you up to nine semesters for a double major, for a single major, it's up to eight, um, but a lot of people graduate early, right? So those are some of the roadblocks that you may face uh, when you're trying to plan or when you're actually doing your double major, your triple major or whatever, right? Um, just things to watch out for. All right, so um, there's a really, really good Daily Cal article about people talking about double majoring and like why they decided to pursue double majors. And one of the really good quotes that came out of this Daily Cal article is, if you're thinking about it, you should try it, right? 
uh, there is nothing wrong with like sampling a couple of classes uh, when you're new to Berkeley, right? Because you're new and you like don't know what you want to do yet, right? You don't know if you want to do software engineering for the rest of your life. So a lot of people like sampling classes in their first or second semester in order to understand like, oh, I want to I want to try a little bit of Cogsire. I want to try a little bit of um, like math to see if I'm actually interested in the courses that I'm taking. Um, so there's nothing wrong with sampling a couple of classes first before you actually decide like, hey, I want to double major in this and this. Um, as Sabrina mentioned, like planning is a really, really important part about being a double major, right? Awaken your spreadsheet ninjas, right? Make it happen. Uh, there are loose uh, planners in Berkeley. Not a lot of them are very robust. Um, so uh, plan it out yourself. Um, and just make sure that you are prepared to do a lot of the a lot of the planning uh, and be prepared to like have that work ready for advisors to like look and, and uh, approve and, and think that you guys you can handle it. Um, and also a really important tip, uh, a key takeaway is secure one before you secure both, right? You don't want to be worrying about um, whether or not you're going to be able to make the CS uh, GPA cutoff, if you're also worrying about trying to get like a, um, a math major on top of it, right? Secure one before you secure both, right? It's just you want to have one major as safety. Um, one major at Berkeley is already really, really impressive. And uh, in the long term, like a lot of people have hot takes about whether or not double major even has a really profound effect on your career life, right? So, um, Make sure you commit yourself fully to one major and just do what you're passionate about before you try to uh, fight off more that you can chew, right? Uh, do your research and make sure that you can also take advantage of the overlapping class. Um, how a lot of these majors work is you have lower divs and you have upper divs, right? A lot of lower divs have a lot of overlapping, right? So that's how you can gain the, the system. That's why CS and data science is so popular, right? Because there's so much overlap between the lower divs for the two majors, right? Uh, gain the system, see if you can like explore two in one interest and get two majors uh, and sort of like uh, overlap the classes that you can overlap. But note that um, when you get to upper divs, you can only overlap, I believe recently, two classes. Uh, two upper div classes. Um, yeah, you can only overlap two upper div classes between two majors, right? So uh, between like CS and IEOR, I can only overlap two of the upper div requirements. Um, yeah, so just things like that. Uh, there are little rules like that that you have to map out and make sure that you read. And and uh, if you're worried about like any of them falling past you, make sure to talk to an advisor about it. All right. So we've got a speed run through uh, this part. Basically, we're gonna do a, also a little bit uh, of advertising for the organization that we're in because uh, we believe that it all made like a really profound impact on us uh, and it helped us like transition into Berkeley CS. Uh, so really quickly, something that I wanna advertise about our organization is we get tons of support from the EECS department in terms of finance, proximity to professors and um, yeah, and networking uh, opportunities. We get tons of support from the EECS department um, because we are addressing a minority in engineering and a minority in CS. Um, so with that being said, I will let Eileen take it away. Okay, so an overview of the CSK program. We typically target girls who are interested in technology or computer science um, in who are freshmen going, like going into freshman year. Um, we have four objectives outlined here. First is to introduce you guys to the basics of programming, web dev, data science, and also a broad range of fields within technology. So you don't actually need any pre previous programming experience and you don't need to be majoring in computer science in order to apply to CSK. Um, if you're interested at all in any of these fields or if you're interested in technology for a career, then I definitely think you should apply. The second objective is to provide an opportunity to visit tech companies in the Silicon Valley. So we'll have guest speakers from different companies like Google and Splunk come in and talk about their experience. We also have panelists who have interned and can share their experiences and how to get the job and pass um, interviews. And you can also ask them any questions you have about industry life and work balance. Um, the third point is to prepare incoming freshmen to college life, which I know can be really difficult because for me, I was for out of state and joining CSK was a really, really good way for me to surround myself with a support group and also give me access to resources um, before attending college. 
And in my cohort, I actually still recognize CSK girls in my classes. And even though I don't, I didn't really talk to them during the program, I can always like reach out to them. And I've actually like formed study groups and study together with them. So the last point is that it creates an empowering community of friends. And we also have a lot of socials planned like um, ice cream socials and also board game nights. And this is a really great way to meet new people, um, expose yourself to different backgrounds and perspectives before you even enter college. And so that when you do enter college, um, you have this network of amazing girls and who you can form study groups with before classes even begin. And I know for CS classes, it can be hard because it's a male dominated field, but I think it was especially helpful for me just to find like a community that I could always rely on before I even entered college. All right. Awesome. So now I'll talk a little bit about the timeline for CSK. So um, it started today. Thank you so much for showing up. Uh, we're not done yet though. Don't take it as like we're done, but uh, thank you so much for showing up. Um, we're excited that some of you guys are interested in double majoring or CSK or both. Um, a few deadlines coming up is your SIR deadline, your intent to enroll or uh, that thing. Um, and right after, that's when we will open our applications on May 2nd, around midnight. And then we'll give you guys, we're giving you guys roughly a month and a half to finish them. We'll, we'll close apps formally on June 20, and then in about a month or so, we'll release Applications. So this is the deadline that we have so far, and hopefully nothing has to change. The actual program itself is going to be around the end of August, one week before your GBO, your Golden Bear orientation. Um, so hopefully no one has any like time constraint or like time, what's the word? Yeah, I don't know the word, but uh, hopefully those who are accepted into the program can make it. Um, so this is a rough timeline. Um, conflicts will be handled, I believe, on a more case-by-case -case basis. We want everyone to be able to show up, but we also understand that some people can't show up for certain parts of the week. So if you guys want to keep up to date on any updates or any application updates, um, you can find our website on cskickstart.berkeley.edu. Um, you can also join our Facebook group um, or our Instagram page. And also feel free to reach out to us through our email, cskickstart at gmail.com. And don't hesitate to ask us any questions because I remember when I was a freshman, I reached out to the Facebook page about like questions on classes and they were really sweet and they helped me a lot and it helped me um, decide whether to attend Berkeley or not. Um, and I also really recommend that you scan this QR code just to join our mailing list so that you can have access to our application as soon as we release it. Yeah, and just um, a little bit about like my personal story in CSK. I'm living with all CSK members uh, for like probably the next three years out of people that I just met in the program. So it's a really good bonding experience and it's a really good like chapter to uh, CSK Berkeley. Um, and also somebody asked a really, really good question. The program is only for incoming freshmen. So you can only apply during the short window. So it's um, a time sensitive program. Um, and we are also growing at like a really, really exponential rate because we get so much support from the Geeks department. So in 2016, 2017, we had around 30 to 40 people in a cohort. Last year we had 80 people in a cohort and this year we're aiming for a hundred students. Yeah, as Sabrina mentioned. So thank you very much. That concludes our presentation. Um, you can also find the presentation at this tiny URL. Um, and yeah, we can accept questions now. Um, I think the system that we'll be doing is uh, we'll be taking questions on uh, the document, um, on this document, and then, yeah. Oh, that's a lot of questions. Okay, yeah, so we'll be taking questions on this document. Um, I think I've already answered some of them. Uh, so let's um, okay, let's try to keep the questions here more general so that everyone can kind of like, so it's not specific to like a specific major, if that makes sense. Um, if you guys are interested in asking questions about specific majors or the stuff that we're doing, uh, there will be time for that in breakout rooms.
I also just dropped the presentation. Uh, in the Okay, we can also answer some questions like on the actual doc. Like if they're really, really specific and we feel like they're not like high urgency or high priority. Um, all right, what does a typical day look like as someone who is double majoring? <laughs> that really depends on you as a person. Uh, if you are on top of your stuff, right? Uh, your day can look fairly good, right? You can, uh, you can, <laughs> do a full class grind in the morning, go to Moffitt um, and have some time in the evening to yourself. Most people though, even if they're like a, like a single major, most people are busy because they just end up, or they're, they're really busy, right? And they don't have a lot of free time because they ended up, they end up picking other priorities like research and uh, clubs are really, really big to them commitment at Berkeley. Uh, so it really like is up to you. But for me, I want to say like classes take up um most of my weekdays uh, like in terms of like lecture and discussion they take up most of my weekday times and then i get uh evening time to like study on my own uh like maybe like 7 p.m uh, and onwards and then um on weekends i only do like club work and i don't do any unless i have an upcoming midterm Um, is Mac or Windows better? Ooh, hot take. Uh, I think for, okay, it depends on what you're doing, right? So if you're doing like iOS development, like obviously like Mac is better because uh, Apple is uh, very exclusive. It's a, it's a cool, cool kid club. Um, so like if you're doing uh, Mac or iOS development and you want to make like mobile apps as part of like maybe Eileen's club, mobile development, uh, mobile developers at Berkeley, like you need a Mac in order to do, to do that. But more generally, um, if you're doing like website development, like React Native stuff, Windows is better. Um, also, the compute power on um, Windows is is pretty legit. It also is Linux, yeah, low key for a lot of uh, machine learning things. It can only be run out of Linux machines, which is absolutely terrible. But yeah, that's <laughs> that's that's another very very hot take. Yeah. yeah. And for me, um, I brought a Windows computer. But when I got to Berkeley, like almost everyone has a Mac. So if you have a question about Windows, it's kind of hard to find like resources because everyone has a Mac. So when you ask them a question, you have to like go in your little group of like Windows people to like figure out a solution to the Windows problem. So if you do have like the choice to pick between Windows and Mac, I would say pick a Mac, but it really depends on like what you want to use it for. Yeah, I agree. Um, generally, if you're crossing like other colleges, I don't think you need to fill like all of the colleges general eds. Like um, I'm interested in like College of Engineering and LNS. Like I'm pretty sure I don't have to take like double the English. Um, yeah, it, I think it, yeah, I think it depends. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure like you don't, especially with a minor, like if you minor in a college, like there's even less of a chance that you have to take double English. So now I'm gonna do that to you. Um, yeah. Eileen, can you talk about your call time major? How helpful do you think it is for you? <laughs> this is fine. Um, so the reason I chose to major in cognitive science was because is really interdisciplinary. There's like seven different fields of cognitive science. There's like linguistics, um, like philosophy. I don't remember the other fields, but it can really be applied for anything because you basically learn about like human behavior and the brain, but you can also choose to specialize in different fields. So you can choose to specialize in like machine learning if you want to do that. And for me, um, I chose it because I'm really into graphic design and I think there is a specialization for UI UX design also. Like there's a class, there's a design class you have to take as a prerequisite for a cognitive science major, but then there's also upper div cognitive science classes like user interface design that you can take if you're interested in that. So I think it helps a lot with um, UI UX design. And then also 
Um, another thing you should do is maybe like get into design clubs at Berkeley or maybe like create designs in your own free time or get into web development. Um, that might help. But in terms of cognitive science helping, I think it does help because like cognitive science opens you up to a lot of different like future careers or jobs that you want to do. Yeah, great answer. Um, I'm taking Coxi one right now just because like she, she kind of looks cute to me so I decided to take her. Uh, and they do go over like UI UX designs uh, loosely uh, in like literally like the first course because they care about like sustainable design and stuff in uh, Coxi. But uh, I think there is only so much experience, right? You can get from like a professor at Berkeley teaching you UI UX design. Like a lot of the students seem to be more uh, in tune with how to design correctly. So uh, I really, really, Sabrina's the clutch. She dropped some design clubs. Um, I really, really recommend joining clubs if you're interested in design because they give you basically a sprint lane in order to practice UI UX design, especially the, the tech oriented ones, right? Um, yeah. Um, I can talk a little bit more about what IUR is. Uh, IUR is uh, using math to my systems. When it, if you can describe IUR in one word, it's just system or optimization. I was about to say system optimization, that's two words. It's just optimization, right? So it's being, uh, the technicality comes with industrial engineering, right? Uh, so it's, I was interested or like in the past, I was interested in like business administration, but I realized I wasn't into like uh, microfinance and macrofinance. I wasn't into like the econ uh, parts of it. I wanted to just like look at a system and understand like, hey, we're losing money in X, Y, and Z. Uh, and like immediately uh, suggest that change or immediately like see like the data growth from that or like the data change of that, right? Because I really, really like numbers. Um, so IUR is very math heavy and uh, it's, uh, optimization of larger systems. And the really, really cool thing about IUR is it's a small major, and then you also have a lot of breathing room within IUR to focus on other disciplines, right? So the thing that we were talking about earlier with like concentrations, like if you're a data science major and you wanna concentrate in like econ, you can kind of do the same in IEOR, right? And IEOR, if you're interested in like economics, you can go full into FinTech if you want. Like if that's the right, if that's like the thing for you, you can take classes that are only FinTech based and you can choose to have a FinTech emphasis in IEOR, right? But if you're interested in like AI stuff, right? Like the stuff that I'm interested in, like you can take like, you can have that emphasis as part of your IEOR major in your upper div classes and you can decide to only take classes with that. So um, yeah, a lot of majors have breathing room. So um, there's some people think that you don't even need to double major in order to have like a lot of breathing room and be able to explore different things at Berkeley because so many majors offer this uh, domain emphasis sort of situation where you take different classes um, within one major. Yeah. Are you guys planning on studying abroad by any chance? Yeah. So I'm planning on studying abroad after I graduate, the summer after I graduate. Um, just to fulfill the interdisciplinary breadth. And I'm planning on either doing the cultural immersion or global internships. For CS and technology, um, it's kind of hard to find major related classes when you're studying abroad. So I recommend that you do it for the experience. And also if you're doing an internship, like even if you are doing an internship or you're taking classes, um, you will have a lot of extra time or I've heard this from my study abroad friends, but you're gonna have a lot of extra time to like just explore the city and also have fun, which I think the experience is more important than like getting the classes out of the way. But I haven't done it yet, but I'm planning on doing it. So I don't really have that much to say, but it, it's all up to personal preference. Wait, I can, wait, I can answer. Um, wait, which question are we on right now? <laughs> Sabrina, did you declare the double major in Haas? <laughs> I, I came in as a declared student in Haas, but I can definitely talk more about, okay, for those interested in business, anyone can apply for Haas. I don't, like, they don't care if you're in EECS, they don't care if you're in CNR, they don't care if you're in the Environmental Design College, okay? All you have to do is take the prerequisites, submit the application, and then you submit the application sophomore year. Then during sophomore year, you hear back, you wait and you hear back. And 
so yeah, it's it's almost like every single other major, I guess. You have to just take the prerequisites, uh, submit your application, and then you can either declare or you can not declare. And you can always take like economics or take another major. Um, you don't have to be a student in LNS. You can be a student anywhere and still be able to declare a double major. Um, okay, I think, yeah, that answers another question. Great, so I also wanted to talk about declaring for Haas because um, when I came into Berkeley, I switched my major a lot of times, but when I came into Berkeley, I was just planning on doing CS, like focusing on declaring first. So I took like the first few classes pretty seriously just so I could declare. Um, and then once I declared, um, I declared my, during the summer of my freshman year, I took CS 70 over the summer, but then my second semester of freshman year, I got really into business. So I decided to um, pursue like, or do the prereqs for Haas. And this just goes to show that like, if you're interested in something, then you can just double major in it. Like, like don't hesitate that much. You have to plan a lot, but there's a lot of room for you to explore different classes. So I did all my prerequisites for Haas during my second semester of my freshman year and my first semester of my sophomore year. And then also, if you're looking into applying to Haas, make sure you join like a bunch of business clubs, like consulting clubs um, because, or like business fraternities because those give you a lot of resources and help on your essays, which are a really big part of your application. And so I didn't get in, but I after I didn't get in, I decided to do cognitive science and I can still graduate on time and even early if I wanted to. So this just kind of goes to show that um, you can change your plan throughout your career in college and it will all work out in the end as long as you plan some other questions. Um, when should you declare that you want to do a simultaneous degree after you fulfill the lower division? You, you need to, for I think for declaring any double major sort of situation, you have to secure one before you secure the other. Like I think you have to like already fulfill the requirements for one major uh and yeah before you before you submit a petition because when you declare a major you have to submit something that says like hey i'm declaring cs and then when you're doing a double major you have to submit another form that says like hey i'm trying to declare like these two majors so you i think the order is like you declare one before you submit a petition to declare like two uh, or like a simultaneous degree yeah um, if I'm interested in going to grad school for something like computational biology, would I be better do off doing a double major in biology or looking at research? I agree. I think research is is more important for grad school. Um, and um, yeah, if you if you have questions about research, like you can also ask that too. I think we can talk a little bit about that. research is like a pretty big theme at Berkeley. Uh, all of our all of our dorm money uh, doesn't go into the the food; it goes into research at Berkeley. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can yeah. If you also if you just have questions, like feel free to unmute. You don't have to like raise your hand or anything. Like if you have questions and like you think that like we're going through this doc too slow, like feel free to answer them. Or if you feel like we haven't answered your question like adequately enough, there feel free to unmute um, and just like shout out your question. It's totally fine too. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, I just had one quick question, and this might be, uh, you know, a bit more personal, but uh, I got in as an EECS student, and I'm also looking to uh, double major within Haas. And so I was wondering if you would recommend uh, with the double major, if I pursue research opportunities or internships? I think it depends on where you want to go, right? So, um, 
if you're doing geeks and haas and you see yourself becoming like a like a pm sort of situation or you see yourself becoming like a like uh or if you want to like do some sort of like administrative role within cs uh not so much like the deep eat stuff uh then i would recommend industry um you can definitely try out both uh what a lot of people do is uh they well, like you can do a lot of people do research during the school year uh with like a professor in their sophomore or their junior year and then they do uh industry like jobs in the summer um you definitely don't have to conflict both um and it really depends on like where you see yourself end game. Um, but in my, I'm a little bit biased, so I will give my opinion. I think internships are a little bit better um, just because like um, they get, they, it's like right there, like in the working field. And like, if you know that you're eventually going to end up in industry, like you might as well just pick up in within uh, years. But lots of people disagree with me. Um, it's completely up to you. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah. Should we um, open up the breakout rooms now? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I want to answer this robotics question. Whoever asked the robotics question, put in my breakout room. OK. Um, let's open up the breakout rooms. Um, oh, and Christy is here, too. Hello, Christy. OK. Um, Wait, let me share my screen again real quick, just so we, just so you guys know, like, um, how the breakout, or like, so you know, like, who you want to visit in the breakout rooms. Um, this is the sort of situation that's going to happen. You can uh, go to whatever breakout room you want uh, to ask questions. And it's just a more, like, it's a smaller setting. So thank you so much for coming to, like, our recorded session. And if you need to hop off, that's totally fine. But I really do recommend, like, coming and talking to us about the breakout rooms. Yeah, thank you.